Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in PUBG Black Budget. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we're going to take a look on your Nvidia and Radiant Pyrometer. And at the end we will go inside of the game and I'm going to show you where is the config file. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for NVIDIA. So in the uh, graphics section, first of all, it's not compatible right now with the NVIDIA app, uh, the new PUBG uh, game. Um, I, I use the LSS swapper to, to look at the uh, DLSS version. And, and as you can see, they're using the latest one. So it's not an issue. You're going to use the LSS for in this game. So that's pretty good. And uh, we're going to go to the global settings over there. First of all, for every game, I really recommend just to use the DLSS override at latest. So you press there, you're going to make sure that you're using the latest frame generation, latest ray reconstruction, and same thing for your DLSS. After that low latency mode, I recommend to go with on. If you would want to lock your FPS, you can do that over there. The last one that can be clutch is your shader cache size. I recommend to go with 10 or 100 gig, depending on your disk space. Uh, by default, normally you're going to use 5 gig. If you just install 3 or 4 game on your PC, that's not an issue. But if you have like 15, 20 game, uh, you don't want to recompile your shader each time you boot a game. Sometimes it can uh, do some uh, corruption in your shader, stuttering and stuff like that. So just increase this one. For system, if you want to use G-Sync, this is where you click. So go with on. I recommend to use the full screen and window uh, and make sure that you select the proper monitor. On my end also, uh, I'm going in native for sure. Make sure that you're playing native resolution. But your refresh rate, really important to use the IS one. I know a lot of people, they're buying like a 144 hertz monitor, but they're running it at 60 and for the color, if you have a 10-bit monitor, make sure that this one is at 10 and using the dynamic range at full. If you don't, just stay at 8-bit. That's not an issue. And the last one is your uh, digital vibrance. It's pretty good for PUBG. I recommend to go with 55, uh, a little bit more saturation. It's easier to see enemies, less gray. So this one can be clutch. Uh, after that, in the performance section, power maximum, I recommend to go with max 133%. Uh, percent. Uh, if you have the thermal space, so for an example, you're running the game, you're at 59, uh, the algorithm is pretty, e is going easy on your uh, card. You can just send a little bit more wattage, so you're gonna have like longer boost clock. You can expect 5 to 7 percent boost in your FPS. If you already have like bad thermals, you're playing a game and you're always at 80 degrees, it doesn't change anything, the algorithm will not change anything. So honestly, just put your power maximum at 100, don't touch it. 
So this is pretty much it. Now let's go rate Radian. So now for Radian card, we're gonna go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're gonna make sure that you're gonna synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're gonna go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluid motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness a slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing and I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver and also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now inside of the game, we're gonna go to the graphics section. So first of all, display mode, make sure that you're running full screen. You will have the best FPS and also the lowest input lag. Make sure that you're playing in native resolution. After that, for the FOV, by default, it's 90 and zero. If you increase it, you're gonna see that your FPS drop a lot. So uh, be careful with this one, it's a question of reference. Weapon depth of field, weapon motion blur, uncheck for better visibility. Performance preset, go with low. You don't have any custom mode, so right now you can do anything, but I'm going to show you in the config file. You can see different um, parameter that you can change. Anti-aliasing, this one is a bit weird. No FXAA, no disable. So TAA, honestly, the game looks too blurry for me. I can't play with this one. TSR is not good also. If you have an NVIDIA card with RTX, for sure go with DLSS quality. You can expect 10% boost in your FPS. If you have something else or you don't have a, an RTX card, FSR3 will do the job, but the LSS is, a be is better. 
It's a bit tricky. I saw some ghosting with them. It's not that bad, but it depends where you are. And uh, anyway, I, I hope they're gonna fix it. But uh, definitely you will have some ghosting issue. But TAA is even worse. So uh, I don't know what to tell you about this one. And uh, max FPS. If you want to go unlimited, if you want to lock it, this is pretty much where you're gonna do it. Vsync on check uh, to have the lowest input lag. Sharpen, I recommend to activate it. Normally, when you're using DLSS or FSR, you will have a slider for your sharpness, so 0 to 100%. You don't have that right now in the game. It's an alpha. Uh, so I recommend to go with Sharpen activated. Uh, it will help. The game will be less blurry with DLSS and FSR. So this is pretty much it for the in-game settings. Now let's go to the config file. So now for the config file, go to your C drive, user, the name of your computer, app data. This one will be hidden, so make sure that you can see your hidden files. Local, PBB, save, config, and Windows client. You will have your game user settings like this, double click on it. And if you scroll down, you will see that uh, scalability group, you will, all your different parameters are over there. They will be equal to zero because zero means low. So when we put the performance uh, preset at low, everything was zero. Except my texture quality that I decided to modify by myself I, at two. So uh, to have better uh, texture inside of the game. I want to mention this one can be tricky because, you know, it's an online game and uh, you can be banned sometimes to modify your uh, config file. I didn't have any issue and it's a private alpha right now. So, uh, and I'm pretty sure those settings will be inside of the game. It's a it's question of times. So anyway, you can, you will take a risk if you do that. But if you want to do it, a lot of people has, is asking me the question. This is where you do it. After that, make sure that you save, click X. And right click on your game user settings over there. Go to properties. Make sure that you put this one in read only because you don't want the game to override your config files each time. So really important to do that. So this is pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions, just come in in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.